It's a blueprint, a rubric, a guiding light to meet deadlines. It's formulaic to adorn us these chords. So give us more of the norm. Come along, it's formulaic. I'm Shelby. And I'm James. <laughs> and this is a table read episode of Formulaic. The podcast and script writing where we break down a thing and make it into a new. Yeah, I'm still not sold on the preposition in a podcast in script writing. I don't think it makes sense, but, you know, a I podcast like how in it script sounds. writing, a podcast of script writing, a podcast for script writing. No, you say like this is this in this, you know. How is the podcast in script writing is in the podcast. It's a podcast about script writing. Th that's how like when you go to a presentation, not a presentation, a TED talk, not a TED talk, a lecture hall. And someone says like, hey, this is a lecture. Ab would it be? A, a they say about. Don't they? Uh, yeah, but then but that's also <laughs> not what we're do it would be because it's not about script writing. We're literally doing no, that. Not. You're right. We are in it. We're yeah. in the script. There you writing. go. <laughs> oh, man. I don't have any health updates. So I don't think I you would learn anything from a quick podcasting school that we will have to do with you, Shelby. Oh, no. What are we going to what do we have to do? All right. Well, one. Are your elbows on the table that also has your microphone on? Listen, There yeah. you go. Get it off from there. The amount of times I think it would be maybe 10 minutes off your bill for for the <laughs> for the rom complex if you just did not bump your microphone or anything touching your microphone. That's a great idea and I've been trying to think about looking into possibly getting like a microphone <laughs> arm. <laughs> Do you have a shock mount? No, I don't know what that is. Do you want me to pick up my microphone and show you what the, I have? Please do not do that. <laughs> I'd have to edit it. Come on, dude. It's one of these like rubber band things because I'm moving my microphone. No, no one will know that I'm moving my mic right now. Yeah. I don't have that. Um <laughs> You should just get one. They're easy to find. Scoop one up. I would love to have these things. I need you to teach me. Here's the thing about me is that people think I'm smart, but I'm actually a stupid idiot. And I'm no. waiting for people to correct me because that's the only way I can know if I'm doing something wrong. Well, there we go. You you learned one thing new today. Get a shock mount. Also, stop putting my elbows on the desk while I'm... Well, you don't have a shock mount. If you had a shock mount, it would be okay. It would be just like a little rumble. But when when I'm like, what is... Well, I already know what that is because the waveform's not like <laughs> very tight together. It's like a wide one. I'm like, well, that's bass. Where's this bass coming from? Okay, I have a new idea. I'm going to do stuff like that more so that the edits take longer so that I can pay you more money. Okay, well, just give me another episode to edit, and I'm surprised one of our guests is not barging in and being like, please don't do that. Speaking of our guests, we have some really amazing guests today on this table read episode. We're doing Los Luchadores. So we decided, you know, it's wrestling. We had to get one of the greats in here. So we got on um, first up, uh, Sean. <laughs> Thought it was going to be Sam. I'm Sean Marciniak. Do I say my full name on these? I don't remember. You do you, but dude. That's me. Hey, I, pff, you fuckers know who I am. I'm Sean Marciniak, uh, one of the hosts <laughs> on Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, which is a podcast. I also twitch on television computers <laughs> at Goose Von Kaiser. I love you. Bye bye. And what characters are you playing? Jeez, and man. I'm playing characters today. <laughs> I am playing the announcer. And hold on, let me read the character description. Uh, the most obnoxious person on television, <laughs> Turbine. Okay, uh, now for the actual, one of the actual greats, uh, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sam Frontera, co-host with Shelby over on the Rom Complex. And I will be reading for the roles of Maria Valentine and Ref. You can find me online at New Friend Sam or just follow our podcast because we're really cool on all socials at the Rom Complex. 
And also we have three more of the greats with us today. Hey, I'm Dace. Uh, I'll be reading for Prince Kraken. And you can find me on Twitch or Blue Sky at Dace09 or on Twitter at Delivery Dace. Hey, I'm Juice, but my Christian name is Joshua. You can call me either, but never Josh. I'll be playing the role of Lobo Fuerte, and you can find me on Twitter at JoshuaMin13 or at Twitch at Juice13. That's with two U's. Hey, I'm Kristen. I'll be reading for Laurent and Giant Squid, and you can find me online in Twitch chats as Crystal Fucking Silver. And of course, you have two more of the greats. It's me, Shelby, <laughs> playing the narration and like fucking other stuff. There's a whole list of them. You'll hear my voice. And of course, we have James. Yeah, and I'll be playing who, Shelby? The mayor, one of the beachgoers, Teen 2, and Cal Tulu. Real quick, Nicole made in the oven that's resting right on the other side of the wall before we started recording. Just chicken nuggets, like throw them in the microwave. They're just as good. It's so hot. Yeah, fourth bro made banana bread, but I'm not going to complain about that. No, I would be. I'd say, you know I can't eat bananas. And without further ado, (laughs) here is our episode of Los Luchadores. I did not give it a title. (laughs) Oh, it wouldn't matter because even on the DVD, the titles are not matched with what they really are. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Interior, Union City Wrestling Ring, day. Wrestling fans surround the ring where Lobo Fuerte faces off against Long John Rojo, a fish-hunting luchador dressed in red. An announcer narrates the match while each luchador wrestles for control. Back to our main event, Long John Rojo, the fish hunter, commonly known as a fisherman, versus Lobo Fuertes. Lobo with a headlock, Rojo escapes, behind, taps Lobo's shoulder, and a thumb to the eyes. Gosh. Rojo utilizing trickery and deception to overcome the superior luchador, Lobo. Rojo now, looking for the coral clutch, but Lobo escapes. Spinning catfish, Lobo escapes again, Rojo on the run, misses with the harpoon, Lobo with the frog splash, and the one, two, and three. This match is over. The Union City crowd goes wild for Lobo's victory. We zoom out from the match until we see it on a television screen. Interior, Atlantis, day. Prince Kraken, a squid man with a squid-themed luchador mask, watches Lobo's wrestling match on a TV in his underwater cave. The cave is located underwater, but inside it's bone dry and decorated with coral, seaweed, and pretty shells. Seal Boy, the prince's sidekick, rushes into the room. Arf, arf, Prince Kraken! This is no time to be watching TV! We need to find you a tag team partner, arf! Prince Kraken points at the television. I believe I just did. The theme song plays, James punches his brother. Interior Luchadores Headquarters, day. Three shower stall-sized clear cylinders of water take up most of the floor space in the headquarters. Lobo and Turbine are each floating in a tank, treading water to keep their heads above water. The third is empty. Lobo is wearing little swim trunks, and we're all happy about it. (laughs) Maria Valentine enters with some flippers slung over her shoulder. This is new. Maria, we are training. Would you like to join us? Yeah, Long John Rojo is feeling blue about losing to Lobo and wants to have the rematch underwater. I think I'll try a different approach. I'm headed to my scuba lesson where I'll learn how to move with the water in its natural habitat. Lobo gets a call on his wristwatch communicator. I don't even remember if that's what they have. He lifts his wrist above the water to answer. This is Lobo Fuerte. Uh, Yes, uh, Lobo, are are you down by the docks? No, I'm right here. There have... uh... Been reports of a strong, masked man menacing beachgoers near the docks, and I thought it fits your description. Lobo looks down at himself in recognition, while Turbine crawls out of his tank and dries off. No one's stronger than Lobo. This smells fishy. We better get down there and investigate. We are on it. Lobo hangs up the call and hops out of the tank. Hey, that's the same way I'm going. Can I catch a ride? Wanna hop on the back with me, babe? Uh, I'd rather sleep with the fishes. As soon as the luchadors leave the room, 
Laurent enters wearing floral swim trunks, flippers, a snorkel mask, and a pool tube shaped like a rubber ducky. He looks at the empty room and sighs. <sighs> Guess I'm back on Lobotron duty. He sadly slaps back to his station in his little flippers. <laughs> Exterior, beach, day. Los Luchadores arrive on the beach to the delight of the Union City beachgoers. Wow, it's oh, Lobo. Yeah, Whoa, fuck yeah. Lobo. Fuck oh my god. Yeah, yeah, that's oh Lobo, my god. baby. We oh, love you, Lobo. So yeah, ripped, dude. dude. That's so cool. <laughs> this all looks pretty normal to me. <laughs> this is the one time you might actually be right. Yes, this appears to be a normal day at the beach for me. Since we're here anyway, we might as well stop at the pier for some fish and chips. <laughs> if it's all right with you, Lobo, I'll head to my scuba lesson. Maria, go learn your new skill. Turbine, you stay with me. There's one last thing I'd like to investigate. Maria, Turbine, and Lobo nod at each other and part ways. Exterior, under the pier, day. Lobo and Turbine enter the dimly lit space under the pier. The noise of the crowded beach has died down, replaced with water lapping against wooden supports. Oh, Lobo, you know how I hate it down here. All this under the pier are old candy wrappers and teens. And you know how scared I am of... teens. Keep your eyes open. Look over there. I will look this way. Lobo moves off screen toward the lapping water, while Turbine continues forward, cautiously. Oh, I just... I... <clears throat> I just wanted fish and chips, but now I'm down here stepping on old candy wrappers. Turbine trips. Oof, hey. Watch where you're going. Ah, teens! Lobo, where are you? Exterior, under the pier, day. Lobo creeps among the wooden supports of the pier, looking down at the water for clues. He stops and crouches down. Close up, Lobo's hand. Lobo carefully brushes sand away from the scale-shaped medallion in his hand. It is shiny and etched with an ancient-looking symbol. And close up. Lobo scans the medallion with his watch, then calls Laurent. Laurent, I think I found a clue. The scan should arrive shortly. Interior, headquarters, day. Laurent spins around to the Lobotron, where a picture of the medallion is loading. I've got it. Let me just run this through a search. Laurent tippy-taps on his keyboard, bringing up various windows containing text or images. That's strange. It can't be possible. Lobo, are you sure you found that on the beach? Lobo? Lobo! Exterior, under the pier, day. Turbine arrives at the last place we saw Lobo. Laurent's voice is coming from Lobo's communicator, which Turbine picks up from the water. Lobo? Lobo! A net shoots from off screen and captures Turbine. Ah! The communicator is flung from his hand and lands back in the water as Turbine is dragged off screen. Interior, underwater cave. Later, Lobo slowly regains consciousness in an underwater cave. Remember, this cave is actually very dry. You just know it's underwater because of all the shells and stuff. Lobo begins shaking Turbine, who lies next to him. They are both shackled around their ankles. Turbine, Turbine, wake up. We've been kidnapped. Huh? Harlem world? Turbine sits up and starts looking around. We appear to be in an underwater cavern. Ah, help, help. Lobo, you know the one thing I fear more than teens is vast underwater caverns. We might get lost forever, never to reach the surface again. Lobo interrupts Turbine's anxiety spiral by slapping him across the face, then places his hands on his shoulders and stares into his eyes. Remain calm. We are the champions of Union City. Keep your head straight, and we will always prevail. As Turbine calms down, Prince Kraken enters with Seal Boy, putting the luchadores immediately on guard. I'm sorry for the inconvenience of the shackles. Inconvenience? We'll inconvenience you by turning you into a fish fry. Lobo throws a hand across Turbine's chest to hold him back. We had to make sure you couldn't move around too much on the way here. If our mouths left contact with yours, you could have drowned. Wait, what are you saying? It does not matter. Why have you brought us to this place? If you wish to fight me, then as a warrior, I will honor your request. Fight you? Oh no, I would never wish to fight you. I would like to fight with you. Prince Kraken paces as he monologues. Seal Boy removes the shackles from the ankles of Los Luchadores. I am Prince Kraken of Atlantis. My betrothed has been kidnapped by a rival political family. So it is a matter of the heart? It is, but it is more complicated than that. 
Due to Atlantean law, if I do not marry by midnight tomorrow, I will lose my right to the throne to Calthulu. Let me guess. He's the guy who took your lady friend. So why don't you just get a big group of your followers together and go get your girl back? Everyone in Atlantis is too scared. Calthulu challenged me directly to a tag team fight against him and his champion, the great and terrifying giant squid. I knew I'd have to look for the most powerful and honorable fighter among the land people and hope he would respect the challenge. Respect? Respect my... Turbine, we are luchadors. Respect and honor are what we base our lives on. Well, when you put it like that, Hefe, I guess I can see where you're coming from. Prince Kraken, I will aid you in your honorable challenge. Thank you. Lobo and Kraken grasp each other's forearms in one of those very manly handshakes. Exterior, water, day. The scuba instructor and some students stand on a dock and watch the water. Maria surfaces from the water and, p and pulls her scuba mask away from her face. She holds up three plastic rings, and the students cheer. Great job, Maria. You're a natural. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Oh, shit. Sorry, I thought that was improvised. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it was good. Maria smiles, then notices her communicator. <laughs> then notices her communicator ringing. It's a watch, right? I don't know. She answers it. Laurent, what is it? Interior, headquarters, day. Laurent, frantic, flips through pages of old books and clicks through various web pages. Uh, I, I lost contact with Lobo. Well, when did you last hear from him? He, he was under the pier. He sent me an image of this strange symbol that bears a striking resemblance to the signal of the lost city of Atlantis. Laurent brings up a map showing mostly water with a red blinking dot in the middle of it. And that's not all. I lost contact with Lobo at the pier, but Turbine's communicator sent out one blip before it cut out two from the middle of the body of water we're next to, whichever one it is. Exterior, water, day. Maria is serious and determined. The middle of the water? How do I get out there? Depends. How well are your scuba lessons going? Maria grins, puts her scuba mask back on, and dives underwater. Interior, underwater arena, day. The underwater arena looks a lot like the Union City wrestling ring, except, of course, it is decorated with shells and coral and all of that stuff. How else would you know that it's underwater? Onlookers wearing masks representing various sea creatures stand around waiting for the show. Our heroes enter the arena on one side of the ring. Cthulhu, a cocky and menacing Cthulhu-themed wrestler, enters on the other. Oh yeah! So <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I forgot it was macho. Oh yeah! So you finally decided to face up to my challenge. Too bad you'll still lose. I'll marry your betrothed, and by this time tomorrow, oh yeah. You will still be a bachelor, and I will be a rightful ruler of Atlantis. The crowd looks worried and tense. It doesn't matter how many fighters you throw at my boy Lobo, he's gonna toss you out with the chum. <laughs> you clearly haven't met my champion. Allow me to introduce you to the giant squid. The giant squid enters from behind Cal Thulu. She is a huge woman in squid-themed wrestling outfit and mask. She's bright pink, like all giant squids are. Giant squid stamps her feet, pounds her fists together, and growls menacingly. Grrr. The crowd loves it. <laughs> and so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Your attempts at intimidation are meaningless. Princess Angela would never agree to marry you. Calthulu reaches into the pocket of his little wrestling suit and pulls out a bunch of clams. I forgot he was supposed to be a fancy man shit. <laughs> he's just a rich, yeah, he's just a rich guy. Ooh, yeah, a lady will agree to him. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I had something in my throat. As I was saying, Jesus. a lady will agree to almost anything if you bring enough clams her way. <laughs> Calthulu tosses the clams into the audience. Audience members go wild, scrambling to grab the clams. The clams are their money. Lobo turns to Prince Kraken and nods at him. Your cause is just. I am honored to fight with you. Lobo then turns to Turbine. Turbine, 
See if you can find where Cthulhu is holding the princess. Aww, but I wanted to watch the match. Please, she didn't ask for any of this. Ugh, fine. But you owe me fish and chips later. Turbine runs off. Lobo and Prince Kraken nod at each other, then climb into the ring. Exterior, underwater castle tower, day. Maria, underwater, swims into a window of an underwater castle tower. Interior, underwater cave, day. This underwater cave, I've explained the coral and shells enough, has a pool in the floor. Maria surfaces from that pool, climbs out of the water, and looks around a bit before removing her scuba gear and leaving the cave through a hallway. Interior, cave hallway, day. Maria creeps down a cave hallway. In a place like this, I get the feeling something really ugly could be lurking around any corner. She reaches a door and finds it's locked. Maria kneels down, pulls a hairpin from her wet hair, and uses it to pick the lock. Interior, underwater cave, day. Maria walks into a cave room with a small seating area. Perched on the seat is the Princess Angela, a stunningly beautiful woman with a delicate angelfish-themed mask. Spoke too soon. (laughs) Angela stands and rushes to Maria. Who are you? How did you get in here? Maria Valentine. I swam. The real question is, who are you? There's no time. We need to get out of here before he comes back. Then let's get moving. Maria grabs Angela's hand and runs with her back out into the hallway. Interior, underwater, arena, day. The fight is in full swing. It's the fair and honorable Lobo against the showboaty and unethical Cal-Thulu. Lobo and Cal-Thulu circling each other now. Lobo trying to lock up, but Cal wants nothing to do with our Azul hero. Lobo getting his hands on Cal. Headlock, take over, pin attempt. But what's this? One, two. Cal pulls more clams from his skin-tight outfit and hands them to the ref. Oh, uh, one, two. Lo- <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. I originally wrote it as like, now, now she's counting the clams. Oh. But I like that a lot. <laughs> Lobo loses the hold and disengages, confused. Seeing his opening, Cal gets up, brushes himself off, and punches Lobo in the head a few times. Well, now that's just pouring salt water into the wound. Leaving Lobo dazed, Cal tags in Giant Squid. Giant Squid tag now. She has no qualms locking up with the legendary, oh my! Giant Squid lifting Lobo Fuertes over her head like fish for the market. She transitions, pile driver! Lobo is hurt. Lobo, tag me in. Lobo gets to the edge of the ring and tags in Prince Kraken. Prince Kraken and Giant Squid face each other valiantly, honorably. The tension between them is palpable as they begin to circle each other. Even the crowd gets into it, watching each fighter's every move. It's more like a ballet than a fight. Each movement looks choreographed, as if they've been practicing this fight together their entire lives. It's just like a herald. They crash together and grab each other in a shoulder hold and... Interior, cave hallway, day. Turbine, with his stupid face, is running down a cave hallway, looking for Princess Angela. (laughs) Interior, cave hallway, day. Maria leads Angela by the hand as they run down a cave hallway from the other direction. We see Turbine, then the ladies, then Turbine, then the ladies, cutting faster between them until... Interior, cave hallway, day. Maria and Turbine, entering the hall from opposite ends, run right into each other and bonk heads. Ah, my stupid head! (laughs) Hey! Watch where you're going! You watch where you're going! Maria? How did you get here? Ah! It's one of Calthulu's guards! Maria, get away from her! I'm afraid to hit a woman, but you're no woman, you're a fish! Please, do you know if the combatants are still fighting? I can't let this happen to my kingdom! Turbine, meet Princess Angela. Oh. Well, in that case, have no fear. Turbine's here. The fight is this way. Squid guards appear from the other end of the hallway. You two go. I'll distract them. Maria nods and leads Angela out the way Turbine came in. Turbine runs at the guards, punches one, then quickly backs out down another hallway with the other guards giving chase. Interior, cave hallway day. Look, there's a lot of cave hallways. (laughs) Turbine runs blindly until he crashes into a hallway. There's another one. Filled with water, like a swimming lane. 
The guards are still behind him as he attempts to swim. <sighs> Switching from fast to mega blast. <laughs> yeah. Turbine starts swimming more furiously, but he doesn't move any faster. He's not good in the water. Uh-oh. Interior, underwater arena, day. Maria and Angela arrive at the ring to see Prince Kraken and Giant Squid evenly matched and really going at it. I fear we're too late. Guards come up behind Maria and Angela and grab them, holding them still. Get off me, you fishy freaks. That's a fucked up thing to say in front of Angela when you think about it. <laughs> Another group of guards walk up to the ring with a sopping wet turbine in tow. He's crying. <laughs> <laughs> I I couldn't get Mega Blast. I couldn't get Mega Blast. I just couldn't do it. If we had been on dry land and I had my motorcycle, you squids, you would have been done for. <laughs> we move in close to Prince Kraken and Giant Squid, locked together in a shoulder hold. That's the only hold I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a real hold. <laughs> you are a powerful fighter. Tell me, why are you fighting for someone like Cal Thulu? I am a luchador. I must honor the challenge presented to me. I respect your honor. <laughs> At the edge of the ring, Cal Thulu opens up a clam, takes out a giant pearl, and rolls it into the ring, then hangs on the edge of the ring to watch. Prince Kraken disengages from Giant Squid. I imagine a shoulder hold is like they're holding each other's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Kraken disengages nope. from Giant Squid, <laughs> steps backward, and slips on the pearl. Things are not looking good for Prince Kraken. Mm, that wasn't me, was it? Giant Squid steps over to Cal. How you fight while you're in the ring is your choice, but do not pull any of that while I'm in here. Giant Squid kicks Cal off the edge of the ring. It's just a nudge of her foot that sends him flying. Oh. Uh. All right, fair match. You and me, Prince Kraken, no interferences. As you wish. The prince nods at Lobo, who jumps out into the crowd and punches the guards away from Maria, Angela, and Turbine. Our team and the guards. So, I mean, what's it called when they're holding each other's shoulders, you know? <laughs> I know. I, I, you know what? I'm being petty. It's a lockup. I was going to say, are you thinking like when they're like locking up? Yeah, they're locked up. Okay. I'm sorry. Shoulder hold. <laughs> Shoulder hold Shelby, works. I think shoulder hold is just fine. Thank you. It's, it's perfect, actually. <laughs> Our team and the guards start grabbing chairs and, I don't know, coral structures and whacking each other with them. They're going wild. The prince and giant squid proceed to have a thrilling exchange so evenly matched and entertaining that I couldn't possibly describe it, so someone else is going to... This is highly irregular, but Giant Squid has removed her own tag team partner from the equation, leaving only herself and Prince Kraken in a deadly shoulder hold. <laughs> These two have already given us their all, but oh, massive chop from Prince Kraken. Oh, and a return from Giant Squid. <laughs> Another from the prince. Oh, and another from giant squid. Back and forth, back and forth. This is not about trickery or fancy moves. This is about heart and soul. And giant squid collapses. Giant squid collapses. Prince Kraken on shaky legs. Prince Kraken also collapses on top of giant squid. One, two, and three. Prince Kraken is your winner. The crowd cheers. Cal Thulu boos and giant squid slowly rolls out from underneath Prince Kraken and gets back to her feet. She, too, congratulates Prince Kraken, who's also getting up on a fair, honorable fight. Congratulations, my friend. It's not over yet. I still have to get married. About that. Angela steps into the ring with the prince and grabs his hands. My dear Prince Kraken, I don't know how to tell you this. Angela looks at Maria for support, her new lover. <laughs> Maria urges her on. <laughs> I've been trapped in Calthulu's tower, and it made me think, I cannot afford to live my life trapped in a marriage as well. You are an honorable prince, but I cannot marry you. Prince Kraken bows his head in respect. I understand. He steps away. But I still have to get married to maintain rulership over Atlantis. At this moment, Prince Kraken's gaze darts over to Giant Squid, who is looking back at him. They slowly walk toward each other, gazing deeply into each other's eyes. Wait, 
Did I miss something? Turbine, someday you will learn the great honor that is... Love? No. Lucha Libre. There is no greater honor or love than that. Right. Right. I knew that. (laughs) Interior. Underwater cave. Night. How do we know it's night? We don't. The underwater (laughs) cave is now decked out in flowers and sparkly lights. Don't ask how they got them underwater. As well as coral and shells and all that stuff. A group of Atlanteans cheer while Prince Kraken and Giant Squid stand on a stage. Seal Boy stands at their side because I forgot about him until this scene. Lobo, the officiant, stands beside them. He's wearing a tuxedo with no sleeves. Love is a ballet, just like wrestling. May you together make a beautiful dance, the dance of life. I now pronounce you king and queen of Atlantis. You may kiss the bride. Prince Kraken kisses Giant Squid. Then they turn to the crowd and raise their clasped hands in victory. Now it's time to party! Arf, arf! The crowd cheers, and everyone starts dancing to the music that fills the cave. Interior, underwater cave, night. Turbine stands at the back of the crowd while Maria dances with the princess. We can't hear them, but they are definitely flirting. Turbine is crying again. (laughs) I'm sorry, I, I always get like this at weddings. Turbine pats tears away from his eyes. Interior, headquarters, night. Laurent still wears his... <laughs> Laurent still wears his... <laughs> Laurent still wears his rubber ducky. Well, I guess I don't need these tanks anymore. Sorry, Rojo. We pan over to see Long John Rojo wearing a matching ducky tube drop his head in disappointment. The end. Los Luchadores! Yeah. Los Luchadores! <laughs> and punching my brother, Punch. shoving him, saying, get out of here. And he says, why do you keep that magazine? It's only for these purposes. Hold on. Hey, th- Shelby, thank everyone, and I'll get that poster. Okay, yeah. So, oh my God, thank you so much, everyone. You were fantastic. I can't believe we got such great... Everyone was perfect. Like, Yay. it was... I love that. I'm like, I envision this person will do this this way. And either I'm right and it's perfect, or I'm pleasantly surprised and it's even more perfect than I imagined. So, thank you, everyone. Again, that was our table read of the formulaic episode of Los Luchadores, a, so- a song show that I had not seen until I watched it for this podcast and now I'm left to talk about while James goes and gets a poster. Let's look at Doris! And those deadly shoulder holds. Yes. Yeah. So deadly. This is from Fox Kids Magazine. Uh, you know, oh man, look at all them Digimon in there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Nice. Digital monsters. I love Digimon. Everyone does. Yeah, man. Yeah. Algamon's a hunk. See, and you can see all these Digimon on the poster, but no, yeah. no, 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 that, that's not what you should be looking at. Los Luchadores! Yeah. <laughs> I'd throw this up, I'd scream Los Luchadores and start pushing my brother. Hell yeah. Man, there are so many sexy Digimon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are. Uh, I like how some Digimon just have clothes. <laughs> they just wear clothes. And some have guns and titties. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, which, oh, yeah, brother. Which Digimon do you think would leave uh, their partner for Al Pacino? Um, probably mm-hmm. Sukumon. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> he's yeah, just yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, Hell he's yeah. <laughs> the, piece, the, the one that's just literally a piece of poo. Uh-huh. Or what Hell if yeah. there's like a... a Coffee looking one because he loves that Dunkachino. He does ah. love the Dunkachino. Well, this has been another amazing table read of Formulaic. If you want to hear more of me, Shelby, you can look for me at twitch.tv slash r2shelby2 or on, I mean, I don't really use social media that much, so mostly just go there uh, or like be my friend in real life and then. You'll know where to find me. Uh, also, listen to my other podcast, The Rom Complex, with the beautiful, wonderful, amazing Sam Frontera. Today's Maria Valentine. And check out our Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash The Rom Complex. <laughs> the more money we make on the Patreon, the more we can afford to pay James to edit our episodes. Hey, and speaking of Sam, we are announcing it right now. Her and I are doing a new podcast called Our Only Pick. It's Anna Kendrick, where we're going through no. the entire filmography of Anna Kendrick. Help. Get me out of here. I'm here against my will. 
Rachel, get out. <laughs> Sam famously hates Anna Kendrick. <laughs> That's a joke I just came up with. Hey, guys, <laughs> listen to my other podcast, like the aforementioned soon to be. No, I'm kidding. Listen to Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling. It's Sean and I. We need more listeners. This first season's coming to an end. And actually, Sean, we might s- keep doing the podcast, but... Truly okay. only for the case of making TikTok clips because they do very well on TikTok, but yeah. it, there's no conversion rate. I have to imagine it's because half the TikToks I am not involved in. No, no, so, the ones you're in too. That's shocking to me. Yeah. I get stopped on the street repeatedly by people saying, shut the fuck up and let the funny man <laughs> talk about the dog torture. No, they like if you, you too. <laughs> One of ours, I, I think it broke... On Instagram, it got like 120 likes on a reels and got like 2,000 views. It did well. Nice. That's Does that mean you're going to start paying me for my appearances? No, because there's no conversion rate, man. No one's giving us <laughs> stars on Facebook reels. <laughs> Give us stars on Facebook reels and then send us your nudes. Yeah. And we will use those to blackmail you. And then no. I'll use that money to pay myself. Uh, you want, okay. I've realized with my co host when I do something out of character for myself, meaning like I don't go blue, like if I get sincere or I do like a funny joke. They overcorrect by doing, they're like, yeah, I'm going to do this criminal activity. And I'm like, no, you, no. Oh, no, absolutely not. You have spent the entirety of the podcast advocating for a dog torture device. Okay. How fucking <laughs> dare you accuse me of ever going over the top on you? Yeah, but then when I said like, mm-hmm. oh, the it's, it's an explosion of biblical proportions. And I said, oh, that's when Jesus makes souffle because, you know, yeah. the souffle pops and then you goes guys know down. we're still recording I for know. Black, right? and then but this is the banter <laughs> this is this is what you'll get on sweaty time pro wrestling i we really got to get more viewers guys <laughs> and then you were like oh yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. wouldn't it be cool if you like yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. should come in in people's uh that's not what happened. bakery <laughs> items i was like no man that's a crime yeah but like it's a joke so you know all right oh my god it's not <laughs> though because i know I you do little- it no, it's like a joke, not an actual joke. It's just similar to a joke. Okay, it has the same structure. Up. Hey, guys, go over to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month you get exclusive content every single Friday. It's a good time. We just finished up our run of Sam and Max, where we went through all the show, the games, and the comics. And then next month, or yeah, next month, we are starting... The people of Townsville Z, where we're going through every episode of Powerpuff Girls Z, the anime that Toei did. It's a good time. And if you're a $10 patron, you get monthly exclusive content and all of all the other stuff that you get weekly in the form of straight to Patreon. We're doing what our friend Mars and other people classify as the worst episode of Star Trek Next Generation about a woman reading her dead grandmother's journal and then falling in love with a ghost, maybe? It sounds fantastic. Fantastic to me. I don't get what these Trekkies are on about, but you also get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F, Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, The Waz, Orion, former rapper Defo. He will be a producer. He has not told me his producer name yet. Jordan B, The Chaos Witch, my bickle brother in common law, Joshua, Jake, is Steve Barnes, a sweet child of time. We're coming back, baby, because Wheel of Time is finally here again. The woman in which I emerged, my mother, Lil Corey's BFF and <laughs> Former roommate now, Shane, that fed, twitch.tv forward slash core winning, it's Corwin, and finally, you know them from the rom complex, and oh, so sad that she can't get in on this, our only pick, Anna Kendrick, it's our 2 Shelby 2 of Twitch and the rom complex, I've been James. I've been Shelby. And uh, thank you so much, table readers, for listening to us and reading. Go this episode of uh, Formulaic. A podcast in script writing. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> welcome to Formulaic, a table read episode. I'm James and welcome to Formulaic. It's, <laughs> hey guys, my name's Shelby. I'm James and welcome to Formulaic. You okay, know, let's normally. Take it again. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's take it again. This is a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. let me guess he's the guy who took your lady friend 
So why don't you just get a big group of your followers together and go get your girl back? This is what happens when I don't read through to edit. Because <laughs> there's probably a different line that's supposed to go in there. Anyway, continue. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got, there's a plane above me. It's the water and air show this weekend and it sucks. Yeah, USA, USA. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hold on real quick. Imagine that happening. You're just hanging out. Then Maria Valentine emerges from your floor <laughs> in, <laughs> in swimwear. Oh, my God. You know she has some decorative uh, beads around her belly button. Yeah, she... but then you have to worry about the foundation of your floor. Like, that's my home. <laughs> no. She just yeah. ruined my home. I mean, <laughs> we, we, all, we all rent. So it's, it's <laughs> technically <laughs> your, uh, your landlord who has to deal with that. That's one time true. I saw Jay-Z in concert, and at one point Kanye West came up through a little hole in the stage. So <laughs> I imagine it happening like that. <laughs> but <Into> your <laughs> you're actually excited if Maria comes up through your floor. I don't know, man. Have you seen Maria's Twitter? It's rough. Oh, I mean, no. this was 2008 Kanye West. Like, it was more exciting back then. Now it would be a little scary. <laughs> this has been a marshland media and okay owl production produced by me james mccollum and me shelby sweeterman for more content please visit mlmpod.com or okowl.com and for the best way to support this podcast please visit patreon.com forward slash mlm pod where for five dollars a month you get exclusive content every single week thank you very much for listening